Psychology is the scientific study of behaviors and mental states. It is a rigorous scientific discipline that overlaps with biology, neuroscience, and medicine. Psychological researchers conduct studies using the scientific method, an experimental and mathematical procedure used by scientists to develop, test, and modify ideas about how the world works. They do this by generating a hypothesis based on previous research and observations. A hypothesis is a testable prediction that can be evaluated by observable data. By testable, we mean that these predictions must be measurable and falsifiable, meaning that they are capable of being proven wrong based on observations or experimentation. So if I say that carrots are a better vegetable than celery, that's not really testable because how would I measure better? How could this be shown to be correct or incorrect? But I could turn it into a testable hypothesis by predicting that children between the ages of five and six are more likely to choose carrots when given the choice between eating them or celery. Then evidence could either support my hypothesis or refute it. Maybe because they prefer celery or because they don't want to eat either of those vegetables. This could lead me to a new hypothesis examining children's preferences for other healthy snacks. Another key part of the scientific method is the idea of replication, meaning that we should always be able to replicate a study in order to verify the original results. Psychological researchers ask questions and evaluate evidence so that they can put forth scientific theories, explanations about the natural world backed by substantial evidence. Importantly, scientific theories must be backed by a significant accumulation of evidence, not just the results of any one study. Taking an objective and evidence-based approach requires critical thinking, an objective evaluation and analysis of a topic that considers the full range of evidence, and not just opinions and observations. But humans aren't as good as we might think at determining if what we believe reflects real-world experiences. For example, we are sensitive to illusory correlations, the perception of a stronger relationship between events than actually exists. When we get a call from an old friend after thinking about them, it feels significant, but we are less likely to notice all the other times when we think about them and they didn't call. People are also likely to be swayed by anecdotal evidence, personal stories about specific experiences and incidents, which often feel more compelling than dull numeric data. They may be emotionally compelling, but unfortunately anecdotal evidence is less reliable than large data sets. Researchers have also found that biases influence people's perceptions and reasoning. Confirmation bias occurs when people seek out or interpret information in ways that support an existing belief. For example, people who believe that certain diets are the healthiest option tend to read articles supporting that belief. Hindsight bias is the tendency to see events that have already occurred as being easily predictable, despite having little evidence. This bias can be strong enough for people to change their views without recognizing that they once had a different belief. These natural errors in thinking mean that sometimes we fall prey to pseudoscience, a collection of beliefs or practices that appear to be scientific, but are not supported by evidence. A lot of information that has penetrated modern culture about the mind often misrepresents psychological knowledge. So it's always important to look out for things that might be oversimplified and to be distrustful of articles that claim they provide a quick fix or fast solution to your problems. <laughs>